today for the debate, we have Andre and Julio Bresane, and we also have two more guests that we are going to be, ah, wait, we can do this, that are going to be discussing the films uh, with us tonight. We have Christopher Small, who is a curator, critic, and filmmaker also, so welcome him. And we also have Chloe Galibert Len, um, who is a researcher and a filmmaker, and is joining us. You can see her now in the screen. So, well, then um, again, I wanted to thank you, thank you all for coming today to discuss uh, tonight's program, and also thank you for staying for the debate. Whenever you want to ask a question or make a comment, I can see you all more or less. So just raise your hand, and we'll join you. We'll welcome you into the conversation. Um, but to begin, uh, well, as you know, tonight's um, topic or tonight's, the name of the night is footage fetish. And well, now that you have seen the film, you can, you know why. <laughs> uh, I like your shoes, uh, Andre, by the way. And um, I wanted to, when I, when I was, when we were thinking about this, um, there was a, there was a retrospective a few years back about uh, Julio Bresane's work in Buenos Aires, and um, they did a they did a book that was uh, it's a wonderful book that was very important for the younger the younger critics at that time who were seeing Bresane's uh, films for the first time, and I remember there was an interview there that he did with um, Quintin and and Clavia and Gonzalo Massa in which uh, he says something that. When I read it again, resonated a lot with tonight's um, with tonight's with this evening. That is that he said that the um, that um, uh, he was talking about the pathology of cinema and the pathology of uh, creativity, and that there was no art without a pathology. And I, when I read that again, I was thinking that uh, well, it's something that really brings together uh, the films tonight uh, in a joyful way. Um, and in the sense that you know, to make to make movies, uh, you have to be in a way ill to make movies like this that are also uh, films that are uh, that are made in a context of loving cinema, of cinephilia, in a way of uh, being uh, in love with cinema, but also obsessed with it. And um, so I was, I, I thought that maybe it was uh, to start, I mean, we, we would have an open conversation and uh, jump in whenever you want, but I was hoping maybe I could, I, I wanted to know everyone's impressions about the program tonight, but uh, starting with Chloe, I know it's a lot of, a, a big part of your work is, uh, has to do also with being obsessed or obsessing over images. So I wanted to know, <laughs> that I, wa I wanted to welcome you to the floor and wanted to know your impressions. And hi. Hi, well, thank you so much for having me and thanks so much for the, the two filmmakers for making those films. Um, I have a lot of impressions and feelings and most of all, I mainly want to hear from the makers, uh, also assuming you've seen each other's work and see if you have responses. I think for me, I was really, of course, I was watching the films with the theme of the footage fetish in mind, right? And what was really striking to me well, there were several things, but maybe one one first thing that can serve as a trigger for the conversation um, that maybe has something to do with the pathology that you just mentioned <laughs> um, was this this uh, idea that struck me in both films was how the images that I understood to be coming from outside of the story, the images that seemed like found footage. Uh, even if I, I understand they came from different places in, in both of the films, but how those exterior images um, had something of a, of, a, of a stream of consciousness quality that really sort of made me feel like those images serve as images for the mind doing, doing its work at the moment. And we spectators sort of witnessing a mind at work, being it memories or being it fantasies. Um, and so perhaps that would be one question or one theme that I would like to address to the, the two filmmakers. And again, I'm fascinated by the combination because I think those questions are um, raised very differently in the two films. I'm really eager to, to hear the two makers um, maybe say a bit about he, if, if that idea sort of resonates 
um, this idea of having those stream of images um, sort of emulate a thinking process or a dreaming or daydreaming process, which is a word we have in um, Vinicin Nike's film, the daydreaming. Is back? Hello. Yeah, so thank you again for this screening. Um, so uh, maybe it's interesting to talk about how how the idea came to to use images from outside. Um, it was not a main theme in the film in the beginning. Uh, first, I wanted really to use uh, images from uh, Scorpio Rising by Kenneth Yanger um, because this film started with the idea of uh, making a film about this world, this fetish world, um, but different from a simple pornographic film. I'm, I'm not saying that a pornographic film is uh, bad or, or like art cinema is bad. Uh, it's not that, but uh, sometimes I, I had this feeling that, oh, I just wanted to see a film about the sexuality I practice, but, you know, a, f uh, a film that is more large, you know, a film that is not just a register of a, se of, of a sex scene. Uh, I wanted to, to see a film that had some kind of emotion, some kind of, some kind of reflection, uh, like a general view, uh, a bigger view. And that's how this script started. And then uh, I really wanted to use Scorpio Rising scene of the guys in leather dressing, because um, it's sort of like I'm doing the same thing today, you know, but with different kinds of clothes, with different with different gear. Uh, so it's like something that comes from far away, you know. Uh, we didn't start this. Uh, it's not a new idea. It's something. It's, some, it's, it's something that comes from far, far away in time. It's like we're repeating things uh, unconsciously. We don't know why. It's, it's like it's not rational. But I'm doing the same thing those guys in the 60s were doing, but in different style. So this is how the film is. This is what the film is about. It's about this this universe, very specific, uh, of like sports gear fetish. But uh, I wanted to film it with a bigger scope. So that's why I thought the scene of me dressing uh, side by side with Kenneth Tanger's film. And then uh, the film has a structure, it's very structural, you know, uh, the same thing repeats itself over and over. Like the, the talk with, with the psychologist, uh, the, the, like, the psychologist researching, uh, me doing like all this kind of ritual fetishistic action. And then as I thought, okay, there was Scorpio Rising in the beginning, and I think the, 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 the image from outside can repeat also, can be an element in this, in this puzzle, you know, in this structure. Um, so since we were in the pandemic and I filmed everything in my flat, in the flat I live in Recife, uh, I thought, okay, this is a good idea so I can show like other places, other people besides myself. So, uh, I don't think I looked for a daydream effect with the with the found footage, but I I really wanted to show like this is not a, this is not so particular this is not so uh, specific it's like everywhere it's like in heterosexual sex it's like in classic films from cinema uh, so I think I wanted to make the spectator. Uh, maybe notice that, make that connection with 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 a general team. Uh, I don't know if uh, Julio, uh, would you like to talk a little about what uh, the the question that Chloe br br brought up? Sorry, my English is breaking. <laughs> and hello, <laughs> welcome to the floor. Well, I want to start with this excuse because I have a very poor English and now rusty. So to talk about films and think about films, I have 
uh, vocabulary, 25 words. So I start to excuse myself, to express myself. Uh, it will be very hard for anyone to, to stand that. I know, I, I, I think that uh, films, he uh, just, uh, uh, part, yeah, you can see just part of them. The thing that's curious, it's what's not seen in the films, what's not in the screen. And uh, I think that uh, I saw the, the Andreas film, I think it's very courageous. And, uh, uh, and in a certain way, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, machine gun of follows and textures uh, and has to do with films itself. Look, the main thing, any film, film is not about nothing. There's no film about, film about something is no, it's not important. The film, the main thing in a film is it the film itself. Films are kind of a sign that turns over himself. And the, the, what is in, 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 uh, in front of us is just part of the film. So uh, in a film like, uh, like uh, uh, this Virginia's Night, the title is already very good. It is a, gives all this ancient tradition, of ironic tradition of Nike. And uh, uh, I think the, the, the important thing to see is this uh, thing that's not to be seen. Everything that has emotion uh, has to do with expression. Expression is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is an emotion. You express an emotion. It's, it is very difficult. And uh, I think we should try to, to, to see what is not to be seen in the film. That's the important. Why you can see some things and other you cannot see. You tremble with them. So that's, I think, this, the, the courageous uh, face of the film. He faced that, that uh, long forbidden images, yeah. all under uh, a demon. Uh, 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 a norm moji that is pornographic. No, and I think that's uh, we should see what the film has to do with the unseen. Why? So you can see just some kind of images and others are taboo. And the important is not, is, is more the texture of the image, that, that montage. This is the, 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 the strong uh, uh, current of the film. Well, well that's my, my very, uh, uh, Momentaneous and and and, and pro, uh, without seeing well the film. This is something you have to see and see it well and wait a little bit to, to see all all the images you just happens to know to know. But no, no my my film is as as. Uh, there's, there's another point of view. 
the idea that pathology engenders the style, it's an old idea. It's not mine, it's the way you look at it. And that's what I was in mind when I made this film, Capitu in Capitu. Uh, Capitu is a is a, a, a book called Don Casmurro, which is a very famous book in Brazilian literature. But Capitu e o Capitu is already a point of view. Uh, if you see in Portuguese language, Capitu, Capitu Lo, it's almost a concrete poetry. A futurist verse. No? Repeat, capitu, capitu, lo. So, a, a great poet, Harold G. Campos, he mentioned to me 30 years, 30, only almost 40 years ago, 40 years ago, he mentioned that the main thing in Don Casmurro was not capitu, was the capitulo. It was not the famous woman, Capitu, but the, the chapter, Capitu. Because the book is 100 and 150, 160 pages. There's 148 chapters, one after the other. And so I put on the idea that uh, this, uh, when you are reading, you're making attention over a line, and suddenly you have to stop because there's a chapter. The, you, you pass the chapter, chapter, and then the story and the, and the tale, it continues. But you have to stop in each chapter, interrupt. This interruption, I put it uh, in touch with the epilepsy, which was the pathology of Marshall Delsis. I mean, the artistic sign of epilepsy, this interruption. He made that, that radical writing over four great books, all of them with this attack of chapters, 100, 148, another, King Kasbov is almost 300, Brass Cube is 180. So it's the large, this interruption became very, very frequent in his, in his writing. So I, 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 I imagine that chapter should be when this this, uh, this drama is running. You have to stop, interrupt. And that's the attack. Because when you have an attack, you have the attack, the, the spasms, but you return. You don't die, you return. And it continues the, the conversation. Yeah. But you don't know what happened. Something happened. You don't know what is it, but something happened. It, it became uh, you are alive. So I imagine that this interruption should be uh, it's a suggestion. No, it's this is not a system and this is not a rule. It's just a, a suggestion, an idea. I I thought that could be this interruption, an image of something unknown and anonymous. You know, it's the one who has, but it's, us image is anonymous. So I put it in the film, some images that has nothing to do with the story or, or the plot. 
but we just like uh, uh, um, not expected, unexpected, you know, just make the, the unexpected. That's why I repeat all those things. There's a evidence that each film, each image, are has its own texture, and it's they are in a mis misplaced. They are in a place you put in another one. So he lost his his, let's say the value is lost. So it becomes a new image. So I, I try to, to, to fill those chapters with those images. The idea was to, to also to have the, 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 the position of, of that the film was in, a film was uh, uh, en train de se faire. That's, that's what I said. That's all the film that was uh, it's a, uh, a kind of subversion of representation. You don't do a, a mime or, or, or copy of something that you want to subvert. I think the film has to have, to me, I think, uh, has to have the kind of position. How do you deal with this deep pathology that's in, in yourself, you know? But no, this, hey, the way I use the uh, anonymous, let's say like that, the anonymous images where by his, uh, because they are unknown and because of their texture, how they are, how are they, they, they are, for, how is the first element, the, te the texture, and that's all. Thank you very much. Christopher, would you like to add something on the on this disruptive images? Yeah, um, I should also start with a kind of excuse or apology, let's say, because I engaged in this experiment where I would see both films for the first time just now. So if my thoughts are a little contingent and abstract, I uh, hope you'll forgive me. But one thing that that I think always watching Julio's films and in this case, watching both films tonight that I think about is the way these films bring the body, bring bodily feeling, bodily smells into the cinema as you're watching it. And in the case of both of these films, it is as something of a contrast to something else within the film. And I just came here today on the train from Prague. And in Prague, the rules for the pandemic are much looser. Here, they are more, there is more safety, there are more masks. When I was on the train on the way here in my compartment, there were two guys who closed the door, closed all the curtains. They were big guys with like, they smelled. There was really like a lot of body odor. And they both immediately took off both of their masks and just splayed themselves on the uh, on the chairs. And like, this was my passage here. This was my passage to these films somehow. And this was like really on my mind a lot when I was watching these films is this like the fact that I can't not see uh, the sweat on someone's brow or hair, wa uh, hair wax or something like that. Like, the, and, and in, in Julius, film, as in, for example, Seduction of the Flesh, which I also really love, 
it's it's this that is a contrast to something else that is a contrast to ideas to text uh to other images it, it's you know it's 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 something very hard for me to put my finger on actually I, I feel it very very strongly in both films and i also feel it as a connection to quite frankly the mix of footage styles you know in 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 venus in nikes i know everybody has a different nike nike pronunciation but in venus in nikes the the sense the the, f the first thing that strikes me the first thing that leaps into my eye in this movie is this grain on the image and then it's the idea that yes we're looking at uh, at scorpio rising but we're looking at it on a macbook air you know there are all these just layers of different kinds of uh, sensations that are just lodging in my eye somehow and of course as the films go on it becomes more and more extreme until it reaches a kind of uh, apotheosis but but it starts there like this little this little germ and and uh, watching both films i was thinking a lot about uh, jerry lewis <laughs> uh there are just scenes in these films that remind me of scenes from jerry lewis's films like these kind of strangely picturesque uh, painting like tableaus occupied by someone who's kind of like has these strange movements who has a really strange way of occupying space who who turns their head in a strange way who steps in a strange way you know jerry lewis always like waxed his hair obsessively and sometimes when you watch the films you can just see it in, in, in his forehead and it's like this like these these details are building up so at some point the the ideas of the films are blending with this it becomes a kind of experience of like pushing and pulling away from these things that's my first impression I'm so jealous of your trip, um, <laughs> but let me see. Yeah, um, I think that I'm trying to think what to comment about this comment. Um, I think it's beautiful also the difference, the differences of texture. Uh, this is the first time I see the film screening in the cinema, and I think it was it is really beautiful when that kind of ugly digital pornographic image like comes along, um, and it kind of create it kind of creates uh, like this this abyss where like what's true, what's the best, what's what's more beautiful, and yeah, I think that. I think in both films there's this kind of uh, dialectics maybe between something that is really difficult to think because it's very bodily, it's very even like animalesque. And on the other side, there's always this thinking, this like rigid thinking, like Don Casmurro writing and, and thinking and, and, and reciting a lot of different poets and the psychologists researching and, and trying to figure out what's what what's that all, ab all about and i think it they, bo they both they both work it really beautiful together uh, i was saying lucia that i that i was like really n nervous because i'm a big fan of julius work he's like a, a, a big reference for me and then I, you're I don't know, I thought your comment was beautiful. Lloyd, would you like to? Sure. Yeah, I was really curious, listening to both of you now, if you would like to talk more about your personal, almost affective relationship to the images that you filmed and or did not film, but edited in, in, in the montage of your films, because um, I re I'm, I'm really curious about this idea because the, the title of the panel, the, the footage fetish, sort of suggests this really intense relationship with the image, right? And full of fascination or obsession, um, which uh, I think as someone who works with images or I guess just is used to, to seeing images, and uh, that's probably everyone in, in the audience at the moment, 
that is a form of effect that we know with images. We've, we've, we've all been obsessed with a certain image, but when you're making the film or when you're spending time in the editing room, the relationship that you have with the footage changes, right? And so I was really curious to hear you talk about how, yeah, how your relationship or fascination, if that's the right word, evolved as you were making those films um, in relationship to both the images that you filmed and the images that you didn't film. And it's really, I was really struck, um, Julio, when you were talking just now, and I, it was really, really enlightening for me to hear you talk about these um, uh, unexpected uh, inter interruptive images that you inserted into the, the footage, the, the montage. And you talk about those images as anonymous, which I find really interesting because they would be anonymous for people who watch the film for the first time and don't know your filmography. And, you know, they're just sort of, it, those images that come from nowhere and are hard to relate to the stories that we're trying to follow. But I'm guessing for you, they're, they're anything but anonymous. So I would like to hear you if you want to share anything about your relationship with all of those different images that you edited in the film and how it felt to bring them back into this, this new as assemblage, this new compilation or this new um, arrangement of images to produce this new work. I say that these images are anonymous because uh, they are from film that are anonymous. Most of that, those films you saw, they have never been seen. I have more than 20 films that never, that I have, nobody has seen, not, not even in festivals. But I have uh, uh, the luck, the chance that to keep those images with me. So, but they are anonymous to me also. But they are films that I've made 50, 60, 40, 30 years ago, 20 years ago. And I try to isolate them from the films where I take them to have, to mean something else, to have a different value. And how this happened to me is unconscious. I have no method, I don't have a system. I simply try to translate them, suggest them. I try to suggest something as far as I can go. And all of this, those images, they come with a, a, this mysterious fact that they are to me anonymous. They are just a, a gaze to me. And here and there, they, they turn alive again, like a, a renewed fossil for science, for seeing. So, and then also, there's something that is uh, important to why this, those images are there. Because this is, in this way, the film is experimental. Because the, this image were uh, in, in a kind of montage that they were not made for. So how to put all those images and, and his opposite together. So most of this process of this work is 
he grew unconscious. I didn't have one. I didn't my myself. I never never had a method or, or a project, nothing like that. I need films because I don't know where they are. That's what I need. I need to try to find out where they are. And, uh, and I always fail in that, seriously. No. That's what I can do. Um, so thinking about the the title of this the today's session, uh, footage fetish. Fetish is a word that comes from from a Portuguese word, feitiço, which is translated as spell. You know, it's something magical. It's something that you're like um, uh, sometimes so somehow hypnotized by it, uh, and I think that when I use it, m m my affective relation with, with the found footage is like I took off uh, some seconds of a film that is really bigger, and that image becomes something really more plastical, you know. Uh, in, the, in the original film, it was really in the flux of the scene, in the flux of the film, so it's kind of lost. It's kind of uh, lost in this in this flux of movement. And then when I take when I take that little detail from that film and put in that montage, it becomes really like uh, like a painting. Not because it's a tableau, but because it's like it's the same gesture repeating itself. Um, so. It becomes magical, you know. It become it becomes a little bit more archet arch archetypical. Uh, sorry, my English. Um, and uh, one of the one of the task texts that the psychologist reads that is the book by Deleuze, "Coldness and Cruelty." Uh, it's the it's his book about Sasha Mazok. It's Sasha Mazok is the author of "Venus in Furs." Uh, it's the novel that. Uh, Freud took the name masochism Mazo from it, and it's about this guy Severin, who has a fetish for for women wearing fur. Um, and Deleuze says something very interesting. Uh, he says that uh, the masochistic is really an aesthetic because he really loves scenes. He really loves uh, tableaus. Uh, everything is really like. In the detail, the clothes, the the light, the the position, is like a contract almost. So I think what I do when I wh when I take those images from outside is that I take them from that narrative or or like uh, continual fluxus and transform them into a into a freeze scene almost. Uh, this is what this was the feeling. Uh, when I was like in the editing room, and it kind of equalizes the images in the end. Like it becomes not just a flow, but also, uh, for example, in the like just pornographic images, there's something to the way that people are, you know, leaning against a stair or something, or against a wall, or standing some pose that actually is reflected in these more familiar images that we see. It's uh. It it doesn't become indistinct somehow. It still remains some some kind of distinct object, but at the same time, there's this kind of I don't know familiar physiognomy, let's say, between all these different images. No. Yeah, totally. And and you mentioned that this is a work of a uh, collective. Could you could you speak more about that? Yes. Because because it was, you know, at, at the end. I mean, I don't know why, but I was kind of uh, surprised that it was made in this kind of height of lockdown moment in 2020. Yeah. Um, so it's a collective 
collective of four people, uh, me and my and three friends, uh, Chico Lacerda, Rodrigo Almeida, and Fabio Ramalho. And we always have like personal projects and everybody from the collective helps this project. So we like really sign as authors or like the director, but uh, respecting that distinctiveness, but the other the other ones help each movie, uh, and but we have like a really common taste taste together. We always film like really artificial, colorful tableau images, um, and we love humor. We always like every time we are reading a script because when we write something we, we send to the others and then start uh, we start to like point the errors or oh, this is too tacky stop <laughs> um, and then one thing we always say is that oh, it's too serious it's it, it's too dramatic come on uh, and so we, we we try to work that it could be a little bit more fun and uh, so. Uh, in the pandemics, uh, just before the pandemics, I was preparing to shoot my second feature, uh, Salome, uh, like loosely adapted from Oscar Wilde's play. And uh, so Bolsonaro is like the president now, the far right president, and he freezes the, 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 the financial support for cinema in Brazil. So I didn't receive the money. And I was really depressed. Uh, I said, oh my God! How how what what am what am I going to do? I was going to make uh, this amazing film with with money, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the pandemic started. And then um, I I had these arguments uh, uh, that I was skipping. I didn't know when I was going to film about. Uh, my fetishes, and uh, it was a film with actors, uh, with different uh, locations, etc. And then I said, "Could I film this in in, a, in only my apartment?" Uh, let's try. So I started to develop the argument into a draft, uh, and I st and I started to like it. Uh, okay, this is this is good. This is good. I, I like. Uh, but then there was the question with actors. Uh, I cannot call someone in the middle of the pandemic to, to, to <laughs> film without paying. Uh, and then this day I was giving a class uh, because uh, because I'm professor in, in a photography uh, graduation in Recife. I was giving a class about Cindy Sherman. Uh, and I said, Oh my God! She does all the characters. She only buys a wig and changes a little bit of the of the scenery, and then she's different, completely different characters. And like it's it's very it's not like very well made. It's like a little bit trashy, you know. And it's great. And I said, okay, I can be all the characters. Um, and. So having the support of the collective was so important because I said, am I losing my mind locked in this apartment? This doesn't make sense. And then they, they, they read the script and they loved the idea. Uh, so we made it together. So it was, it was really important to, it's really important to have the spot. And when we started in 2012, we had those ideas of making like this campy, exaggerated films uh, with like a lot of fags in a, in the grass, talking, uh, and then we couldn't be do this alone, you know, because nobody was doing this in, in, in contemporary Brazilian cinema, you know. It was only like uh, documentaries, I don't know, um, uh, in naturalistic films, and then to have four people like, it's great, it's fun, let's do it. It's really important to to make the thing happen. It's funny because it's such a, a dense film, like particularly when you step out of the film, you're totally overwhelmed, particularly because of this last song and this footage and so on. But actually, it's really like Julio's film, and like many of Julio's recent films, this um, 
very simple construction it's it's almost like you know th this film is really about like one person sitting here one person sitting there and what you can do when you cut between them and it's something like Malie or like like a TikTok or something you know it's like it's it's super super simple and that's where it comes from and there's a moment in uh, Capitu a couple of moments towards the start where uh, the background changes you know there's two people speaking against a like a, I should say a backdrop actually this sort of painted backdrop and then it changes and then suddenly there's something about the scene that changes there's something about like the dynamic between people that changes or it or it moves there's a shot of uh, this kind of foggy mirror where you can see two people speaking and then when it cuts to the reverse shot there's a different background then and it just totally flips everything even though it's actually in some way the opposite of like footage let's say it's not new clips it's not it's not dense it's something very simple and elemental i guess Yeah, Chloe, go ahead. Go ahead, if you wanna. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Um, that was really um, striking, just listening to you now, Andre, talk about your process, how fun you make it sound. Sounds like you had fun, like it was joyful, the making of it, which uh, is really hard to achieve both during a pandemic and when you're basically making a film alone in your apartment. Uh, but it sort of made me wanna ask Julio as well about joy in the process of making or about fun or about pleasure, um, where would you locate joy in the process of making that film in particular? Um, and or yeah, how, how important it is? It's a bit of a vague question, but I think about that a lot <laughs> these days and I'm really curious. Um, yeah, how, how important do you, do you consider um, and having, having, joyful moments being it in a writing or shooting or editing phases of the films um and where that was located in the making of that particular film it should be a session of psychoanalysis too long, too, too, too many things to say about it. One thing is important and must be uh, always very well kept. That's joy, the illusion of joy. This is very important, that uh, interjection goddess in this joy is central but the, the feeling of joy is is something very it's, it's not something clear it's obscure. Joy is something very obscure. You don't know where it comes from. Otherwise, you would be only in joy. But uh, I think it's important. Joy is something. But it's be funny and have good jokes is something else. Joy is something that you try to oppose uh, to our destiny that's mediocrity in death these are the two ends two goals that all human beings fight against fight against mediocrity and fight against death and both joy can have a, an important role must have There's a difference that uh, I've been noticed that about irony and humor. Irony is a kind of a 
uh, uh, an investigation trial. Humor is more liquid and spontaneous. Joy, purpose, transpass, cross, all those, those both of those kind of feelings. It's a, it's a, a gift, the one who has joy and uh, knows uh, where she is, get in touch with that. This is a, maybe a, a, something divine, some gift. That's what I can say. No, I, I just wanted to comment uh, your comment uh, about the this kind of melee thing in, in Julius film and, and in Venus. Um, it so the the feature uh, I was going to film before the pandemics, um, and I'm going to shoot in the end of the year because we processed it, the government and took the money. Um, it 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 was developed during like two years, um, and it went to a lot of laboratories, script laboratories, and then they ca the. When I read the script today, I noticed that those laboratories had an effect that they they kind of took away those ki that that kind of aesthetics, you know, that kind of melee magical uh, autonomous scene aesthetics the film had, because uh, the consultors were like, "Wait, w why she wanna cut his head off? Wait, you have to explain, you have to you know build that." Uh, and I did that, and then when I see it, looks like a regular art house film, and I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, you know, each scene must be um, physical in a way, and it resolves itself. And I think Capitol and the chapter does that uh, a lot. You know, when 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 Bentinho starts to go mad, and then all those figures in the mirror in the the shadow and he starts to climb up the stairs there's nothing to explain like there's just something to see and um, when i when i look at this process of participating in all those important laboratories uh, i see that when you are when you are a young filmmaker and you really believe this kind of rules uh, it can really be uh, harmful to your creativity because uh, looks like you only have one way to, to do a film with quality, you know. So I thought about that when you you commented. It also at the end of Capitu, there's the this amazing gag reel, <laughs> of <laughs> like of the film being kind of subverted. And as you was as you were speaking, I was thinking about this about this these scenes where Julio is sort of reenacting like many of the best scenes of the film, walking around the house, lo looming close to the camera and so on. And thinking about, in relation to what you said about the labs, it's exactly the kind of thing that, you know, it just changes the film right to the end because we've, we've arrived at a point where we are starting to like get to the end and then this just flips it again. And it's exactly what you said, it's like this, this rather than build towards something, it's kind of turning it inside out, I guess. Yeah, I, because uh, there is a huge investment in script laboratories, but I, I wonder if it's also necessary to have filming laboratories when you are just in a set doing something that is not going to be used, you know, because um, when you said that the, the image in the background changes and this, this changes everything, when you spend like years developing a script, you, you are just thinking, oh, okay, this is a scene that is occurring in a park, and the crew is going to look after a park, and it's going to be the, that's it. Uh, 
And when you have this experience with the camera, you start, you start to have a lot of ideas about uh, how the scene could be, and you have a lot of solutions, and you, you can spend a lot of less money. Um, so yeah, uh, it's like, it's not only like write a good story, but you have to have this experience filming, you know? So I, ha I think it relates to that. Yeah, and uh, when you were when you were speaking, and and now that you say all, all about all this about the labs, it really resonates um, again to Julio's idea of pathology of uh, something that engenders the style. Because when you were t when you were talking before and while watching the film, I was thinking about this um, uh, uh, different pathologies or things that are considered pathologies in the sense that they need to be corrected, and how these films. Um, don't think like that. They think that the pathology is something to build on. So I was thinking about the, when you presented the film at the beginning, you talked about the no money situation, you know? And <coughs> and I was thinking about money also as a pathology, you know, the, you know, having no money and then building upon it uh, by doing it um, in the apartment or having money from Globo maybe and building uh, on top of that, like for Capitu. And one of the things that brings joy uh, in watching these two films is uh, or where as an spectator the joy comes from is um, from imagination you know you really because you build upon uh, these pathologies in many levels there there is this joy of watching the imagination of another and I and these are uh, the idea of particularity comes from there you know they are these are films that are very particular that there could not be any other film like these two films. Um, and it, it brings me really great joy to see how the films move forward, you know, Capitu in each, in each fragment, in each capitulo, what, what that imagination that is the film is going to bring. And in your case also, like how you're going to, how you're going to appear, how your body is going to be transformed in the, in the next, you know, what are you going to wear? How are you going to, you know, what is what's the what the therapist is going to wear? What's going to be the next outfit? What's going to be the next scene? Um, what's the next texture going to be? Uh, it's really, I don't know. It's 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 the source of all particularities. This idea of building on pathology. Yeah, because I think that. Uh, to like to have this feeling of discovery that is in the image. Uh, it's really a pathology today because uh, really often when I watch experimental films with some friends, they're like, oh, I'm so bored. Uh, but there, are, there is a lot of things happening there, you know, the image, the details, the, the, the change. But like, this is really tragic, I think, because the People want to follow a story, you know, like watching TV series. I, I hope I don't sound like Adorno or something like that, you know, like not like mass culture against the arts, not like that, of course not. But all the TV series e are like this professional photography and it's the same image from the beginning to end. You know, there are a lot of changes in the plot, there are a lot of discoveries in the plot, uh, in the, the character, but like it's the same image from the beginning to end, like hours and hours of the same image. And the, I am bored with that, and the people are really excited. Oh, you saw, no, I, I, I didn't saw, I, I just saw two episodes, and I know it's going to be the same thing. Um, so, uh, maybe this kind of desire to desire to look the thing that way or to look the world or, or, or to look at image that way it's a it's a pathology uh, and um, it feels really it feels transgressive you know like uh, nobody cares the f uh, like Julio said uh, those films nobody watched it I did uh, but um, it, it's like a transgression that nobody cares, you know. Uh, so it's, I, I keep thinking about this. Um, 
I think it's like Jeff Gold. He has this text called um, Marks of Indifference. And like um, he said that all, all important works of art must have those marks of indifference because the everybody is indifferent to them. Like, uh, the, ah, there is this position, there is this new photographer. Nobody cares, you know, the life goes on. So the people are indifferent. And then um, I think the, this kind of transgressiveness or pathological feeling about the, uh, about the, the both films is like they both are really ironical about all. Oh, I'm talking about something, but I know that you don't care. So this is this is how like the humor or the irony or the or the like this like of kitsch imagery of of the both films like really present themselves. I don't know if I travel it a lot in my mind, but I don't interrupt anybody, but. It, it I was it makes me think about uh, there's this American critic that Lucia also loves Manny Faber and he was also a painter and a really great painter and often he painted his favorite filmmakers but he didn't paint them as portraits he painted these crazy kind of dense uh, tabletops essentially filled with objects from the movies and. Sometimes it like the painting will be called like William Wellman or Raoul Walsh or Chantal Ackerman. And you look at the table and you have no, it doesn't mean anything to you. Sometimes it's more obvious with Ackerman, or, but it's just these little objects, a train, a kettle and so on. And sometimes like I, if, if I really like a movie, I also imagine what my version of this painting would be. And with both of these movies, it's very easy to see that. Because you, these movies like have these objects, like a certain shoe, <laughs> most obviously, but also sock, also painting, also like um, uh, it's not an object, but there's a moment in um, Capitu where it just cuts to this really beautiful iPhone footage of a of a kind of painted ceiling. I, I have no, I mean, I don't know where where that is or what that is. But it's just things like these that they just like those are the films, and actually they maybe don't have a kind of indexical relationship to what everybody experiences when they watch them. It's just something when you're sitting there that they're these kind of like things that just wash over you, and that certain pieces of flotsam and jetsam stick in your mind, and you and that there's at least to me like and and in in both cases with both of these films that's incredibly strong that's how i'm in like thinking about them now in this like hour since i saw them it's like these objects and these like small images and the and and is the opposite of like a tv series you know where it's these things are not visible in some way they just get washed away because like you said all the images are the same so it just whoosh, disappears somehow Julio, where are those images from, the, the iPhone footage? Well, these images, they are from el 11 different films. 11, 11 different films. I would say that almost anonymous film seen by a very few number of people. I took from these films is those unexpected images to this uh, story, to this tale of Capitu. As I said, Happy two, it's 148 chapters in 160 pages. The number of the, the chapters are ah, the, the sign 
the artistic sign of the pathology. That's different. But you see, the, 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 those, the, the, the pathology, as I said, that how she survives, how is the survival of that. So it's the artistic sign of the epilepsy, the suggestion, the translation, the, the suggestion that could be. It's not a law, it's a suggestion. This was an idea that I read years ago in a, a book about a French linguist, linguist, and 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 uh, a reader of Marcel Proust. He has a book called La Phrase en Proust. The phrase on Proust. And he made uh, a lexicographic and, and, and study, a syntax, syntactical study, the prose of La Recherche du Temps Perdu. And he found some, in some phrases that he called the long phrase. This long phrase is, they are very few. They exist and they are very few. But he has, he sees there an example of the pathology engendering this type. He sees the, the writing like the breath, right? Writing is breath. You can you can feel the breath in the writing. Breathing and writing, they are the same. So, this long phrase means that the writer goes. No comments, no point. A long phrase, just one word after the. He goes to the limit, to the board of his, his breathing. That's the, that's the reason of the long phrase. Is the, the long resistance of the oxygen he has in the lungs. He goes to the limit point. He says that he suggests he suggests it's not, not a, it's not an order or a law. It's just a suggestion, a hunch, perhaps. He says that the long phrase is due to the Bruce asthma. Is this his asthma that produced this long? an idea. That's the idea. It survives artistically in this figure of style, the long phrase. This is a suggestion I have for, for Marshall Gessinger. What to do with the chapter? What's the meaning? He gives a value to the chapter. And the value is that this artistic sign. As I said, this film is not a, 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 a adapt or, 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 or translation, or inter semiotic translation of Don Casu. No, is a is a uh, something like a, a, a distortion of Don Casu. Don Casu hundred. 48 chapters. I filmed about three, or maybe four lines of, of this chapter. Four chapters, no more. That's what I can tell you about the, the, 
those images, they came from the film itself. The film asks for those images. They are related to those images. They have a common plasma to those images. I forgot to ask if someone in the audience wants to add something or maybe make a comment. Um, I don't know if I can see you, <laughs> but thank you. Um, when I, uh, when you were speaking, Julio, I, I was I kept I went back in my mind to the Mani Farber idea and the. Uh, or bringing up Manny Farber because um, and ab about this idea of Proust and the um, and the phrase and and something that um, I always think about Manny Farber, which is that if he were to go to a writing uh, class, you know, like uh, you know now the now the arts and cinema uh, is highly institution. I mean, education in the arts and and artists and filmmakers are highly educated in institutions, so film schools um, and, and universities and everyone has a degree and then they have a, no one is self-taught. There is no, there is not an organization of your own education, but uh, you go to the university and then you go to grad school and then you go to, people go to PhDs and, and it's always institutionalized. And I always thought that if if this were the case of there wouldn't be a Manny Farber, you know, because the way in which he wrote and there wouldn't be a Proust in the sense that the way in which Manny Farber wrote, I don't know, I feel like an editor that didn't know this was Manny Farber would say, uh, this is impossible to understand, or this makes no sense, or this is not a word, you know, it's always a, a deviant kind of writing. Um, and I always uh, think about this when, when while curating, especially when you know you have an open call. Um, that is that uh, the truly uh, deviant films are very hard to find and program and watch and understand because you have to connect to a very particular way of making uh, that is uh, in, in itself, you know, and. It's very hard that uh, these kind of films will surface, and it's hard that these film films will lose their anonymity, as Julio calls it, um, because of this, because uh, because they they do not resemble anything else. Yes, that makes me think of something that Julio said earlier that I was um, just thinking about again just now. But this idea that. Um, you were trying to find out what the film was as you were making it. And also you didn't find out really what the film was by making it. And to me, that was one of the, the really striking uh, aspects of the two films, really. Um, and maybe the reason why, you know, this, this stood out, at least to me, <laughs> or had this quality of maybe not being uneducated, because both of them are filled with references. So definitely not films that were made <laughs> outside of... Uh, a certain at least you know tradition of, of knowledge but it felt to me like the two films were trying to understand something you know just not not just telling a story but that there was a there was something about knowledge that was involved in the two films um, that you were either trying to understand something by making the films or that you were hoping that we the viewers would understand something by watching them perhaps those two things are related and to me that, as I was watching the films, I sort of connected that with um, experiences I, I would have watching essay films. You know, films that, again, like are not entirely about, just about telling a story or documenting an aspect of reality, but really try and tap into a question or something that resists understanding. And you are trying to just further our understanding of that thing. And more often than not in essay films, we will not reach a full comprehension and understanding of everything that there was to say about that thing, but still in the journey of, of progressing through the film, knowledge is somehow um, deepened or acquired. And I was wondering if any of you 
if that resonates in any ways, this idea of an essay. Like, obviously, the two films have a literary dimension, if only for the presence of books and readings. Um, but I wonder if that was something that you had on your mind or if it makes sense to you to hear the, the category of essay film in relation to these films or just commenting on this idea of trying to understand something or make us understand something by, by making those films. Not in the sense of teaching a lesson, obviously, in the, in the sense of exploring something that's unknown and exploring it together. Yeah, I don't know, it totally resonates. Um, aesthetically, I really knew what I was doing. Uh, I would be lying if I said, oh, I was discovering something. Uh, I was really like um, sure of what I wanted, but on the other hand, uh, yeah, I was trying to understand something that I don't know if it's possible to understand. and. Uh, it reminds me of what Julio said earlier about the unseen. Uh, so yeah, I, I think the category of uh, a safe film really, really uh, makes sense because if you think about it, the film has references, like textual references, images, citations, um, like interviews almost, because when I, when I speak like the the psychologist scenes uh it's like a first person documentary almost um so uh when i when i was going to make the film i i, I thought i i remember i thought uh the experience i have uh discovering this side of my sexuality is it's so beautiful you know it's like and I really don't understand. Uh, it's something so irrational, you know. It's something so like uh, what we're not supposed to do. Uh, and then why is is this so beautiful, you know? Why why I, I reach this kind of uh, beautiful place when I'm in it? So it's it's kind of crazy, you know. It's kind of uh, what the fuck. <laughs> and uh, and makes sense a film essay and I, I I was trying to maybe not understand but make it a, mi a little bit more familiar or a little bit more shareable with with people you know Julio and would you like to add something to this Sim, deixa eu dizer. Queria, antes de tudo, dizer que o André, I, I would like to tell you, I was speaking Portuguese, was, if I could do so, it would be better. But uh, I think you, you are, I should congratulate you for your courage. This is a, 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 a very, very expensive matter, courage. Today, this is almost uh, uh, forgot. You had a lot of courage, and this is very nice. Is it? Uh, there are many ways to make films. Uh, the idea of uh, give to the images value extras. These are propaganda, these are, uh, there's nothing that, for the one who creates them, and this, this has no value at all. But uh, let me tell you something, this, the film, as I have to, as I understand, is a, a kind of an organ that cross all the arts, all the science, and more difficult, it crosses your life itself. So this, to this, in this uh, 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 crossing, is that the cliche is renewed. I 
to put the, the sign of films in contact with the other signs to renew the cliché. Films done of clichés. This is how film is done, despite clichés. And crossing all this aside, there's something else in, 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 in this, in this uh, game. That is that film became an instrument, a tool of something very difficult, or even even not possible. That is to transform yourself. What we all need, what we all want, is to be other. We don't want to be yourself. We want to be other. And films are a radical tool to this, this impossible mission. And that's the other thing that's fascinating, I think, that is the, that it is impossible. So we have a, a, a radical tool uh, to cross all these arts, all these disciplines, and to put us under the bar of your life you need uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, an effort. And this is the other reason that's why the thing is almost forgot. Because the effort is uh, it, out of the game. It's, 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 uh, today, there's no any kind of stimulus to this. In this way, here, uh, a country like Brazil, we are not walking anymore. We have a retro, uh, 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 reverse. We are creeping. We are crawling in there. We are not walking anymore. So the films could be uh, at least an individual tool to, to stand in front of this threatening tide. Do you want to? <laughs> I think this is uh, a quite remarkable and touching uh, way to end the debate. I don't know about you, but um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Intergenerational radical call for walking. I don't know. Walking back, no? So thank you everyone uh, for staying up, up until now and thank you you to Julio and Andre for sharing your work and Christopher and Chloe for sharing your thoughts. Um, I am really deeply thankful for this conversation. So please, an, an applause to everyone. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you all and I will we'll see you the next couple of nights. So have a great rest of the night and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.